Hi guys, uh, today we'll be solving a question of uh, longitude by chronometer uh, using the star as a celestial body. So if you have seen my previous video, I have uh, solved a long by chron question using sun, uh, but this time we'll be using a star because it's uh, slightly different and requires a bit of uh, different corrections to be applied. All right, so let's start with the question straight away. So the question says that uh, it's 23rd of August 92, um, PM at ship. Now this PM is important. It's a hint uh, that it's evening on the ship or it's night on the ship. And you've been given a DR position or a dead reckoning position. That's your estimated position. And then the sextant altitude of the star Spica is given. So Spica is the star. And uh, the chronometer error is given. Two minutes, 19 seconds slow. And the chronometer time is given as six hours, 15 minutes. Height of I is 11 meters and index error is 2.1 minutes on the arc. So these are some of the key things that is given to you. And what you do is basically calculate the direction of the position line. It's also written as PL. So if you're wondering where is position line, PL is position line. And you have to calculate a position through which it passes. So basically, if you're using the longitude by chronometer method, you use the same DR latitude, but you uh, calculate the observed longitude. And that becomes a position through which the position line will pass. All right, so let's start with the question. So the first thing that we have to do is uh, basically find out what is the correct GMT time. Now in the question, you have been given the chronometer time and the error and the hint given to you that it's PM on the ship, you know, so it's PM on the ship. It's evening on the ship sometime after night. So or sometime in the night rather. Uh, so let's find out what is the GMT time. Uh, now, when I was writing down the solution of the question, I actually forgot about the chronometer time so i have put it at the end of the solution so let's go to the um, chronometer time so this section here talks about the finding the gmt time using the chronometer time now the chronometer time given to you is uh, 6 uh, is 6:15:0 all right 6 hours 15 minutes and 0 seconds error is 2 minutes 19 seconds slow so 6 minutes 15 seconds 0 can also be written as 18 hours 15 minutes and zero seconds so this chronometer works pretty much like a analog watch so if you look at an analog watch you don't know whether it's night six o'clock or morning six o'clock unless of course you can see outside your room and now for academic purposes we assume that we don't know what's going on here so for a chronometer that says six hours 15 minutes zero seconds it can also be 18 hours 15 minutes zero seconds that means it can also be six hours uh, 15 minutes zero seconds in the evening which makes it 18 15 zero seconds all right then the chronometer is given error is given is 2 minutes 19 seconds slow so when the error is slow you add the error in both the cases all right now on um, the chronometer or the ambiguity of the chronometer time is discussed in a separate video of mine you can go through that as well but i'm just taking you through this again for those of you who have not seen my other video about ambiguity of chronometer time all right so when we add 2 minutes and 19 seconds you get 6 hours 17 minutes 19 seconds here and 18 hours 17 minutes 19 seconds then the zone the zone is obtained from the LIT as you can see the zone is obtained from the longitude in time longitude in time or LIT can be calculated dividing longitude by 15 in this case the longitude is 003 degrees 30 minutes west divided by 15 it gives you 00 hours 40 minutes now when it's more than 30 minutes it goes into the next hour when you are in the west longitude you are behind GMT GMT is ahead of you all right so if, say if this is 000 this is GMT time of longitude you're somewhere here on the west side and if your ship is here this assuming this is a ship you are behind gmt gmt will be ahead of you so it's minus one so that's why your zone is minus one you subtract minus one from both the times in one case you get 5 hours 17 minutes 19 seconds and in the other case you get 17 17 19 so how do we know which is the correct gmt well the hint given to you in the question that it's pm on the ship so pm can only be in 17 17 so that's the ship's time zone time can also be called ship's mean time or the time kept on the ship and it's pm on the ship it says in the question so then immediately you write down the date which is given to you in the question it's 23rd pm on the ship so this becomes 23rd and then of course it's only a difference of one hour so gmt becomes 23rd of august 18 17 19. so for the rest of the question you will use this GMT time of 23rd of August, 18 hours, 17 minutes and 19 seconds. That's the time you will use for the rest of the question. All right? And then you can cancel this if you want to. All right. So taking this date and time, 23rd of August, 
18 hours 17 minutes and 19 seconds i'll go back to the beginning of the question and i'll start solving this so for 23rd of august and i'll write this down here again so that uh, you can 18 hours 17 minutes and 19 seconds right so this is the time we'll be using so let's go into the nautical almanac for 23rd of august 1992 uh, for 18 hours let's find out the gha and then for 17 minutes and 19 seconds let's find out the increment correction all right so if we go here you can see this is 23rd of august here so let me zoom it in 23rd of august here you can see 18 hours uh, you will go under the gha aries column all right so because it's a star thing so you'll go under the gha aries column uh, and you will see for 18 hours it's 242 16.6 right now i can make this normal i can use this all right so for 23rd this is the time 18 hours 242 16.6 i just highlighted that for you right that's the uh, gha aries for 23rd august 18 hours right uh, at the same time what you can do is you can go into the stars column here the stars column here all right let me use a red pen if that's okay and then for speaker which is the given question star in the question you can note down the sha and the declination 148 47.8 and 11 degrees 7.4 south is a declination uh, when it comes to stars uh, in declination you don't have to apply any correction because the rate of change of declination is uh, very slow in stars so you don't have to apply any correction all right now let's go into the uh, increments page and for increments page i'll have to cancel this So again, it's a bit of a mess. That's right. So for increments page, uh, I'll have to find out what is the increments page here. And uh, for 17 minutes and 19 seconds, now this is the height of eye page, isn't it? So, so for 17 minutes and 19 seconds, you can see under Aries, uh, correction is 420. 420.5 so under the aries column for 17 minutes and 19 seconds uh, you can see it's 420.5 well if i zoom it in you can see for 17 minutes and 19 seconds in the middle column here it's 420.5 and then you go back uh, into the calculation page what i'll do is i'll come back to the total correction page later on all right and then i go back here so you can see these are the corrections these are the places from where i got my values i've made separate videos about it of course but uh, i thought i'll just make this video again so that you guys know where to get the values from all right and then uh, you always add the increment to the gha and that makes it uh, 246.37.1 then uh, the SHA that we obtained for the star speaker and this is a star symbol this is a GHA Aries symbol uh, you always add SHA all right so uh, I just check the time again 18 17 19 it was yes and uh, you add the SHA when you add the SHA uh, to the GHA you can see the value goes up to 405 24.9 whenever it is more than 360 you will just subtract the 360 and that gives you your uh, GH star. All right, you get your GH star. That's the 04524.9. Then for sextant altitude, you have 04527.2 given to you. Index error minus 2.1 is given to you. So index error when it's on the arc, you will subtract on the arc. Once you do that, you get your observed altitude. Then for a dip of 11 meters, you obtain a correction of minus 5.8. Where do you do that? So let me go back. So for a dip of uh, 11 meters, you can see uh, the height of eye correction somewhere here. So between 10.6 and 11, the correction is minus 5.8. That's where I got it, my correction from. All right, this is the first page on the almanac. You can go and find that out. So then you get uh, minus 5.8. Dip correction is always negative. You subtract it. Then you get your apparent altitude, 45 degrees, 19.3. Then you get your total correction where do you get my total correction from 
so i go back to the same page from where i got my dip now for an apparent altitude value of 45 degrees and 19.3 45 degrees 19.3 i go back here you see the middle column here the stars and planets this is the 45 degrees 19.3 will be somewhere here between this right correction should be minus one so let's go back here you can see the correction is minus one here right and there you get your true altitude as 45 degrees 18.3 to get your true zenith distance or tzd sometimes some books also call it tzx you just subtract it from 90 because all the points on the rational horizon are 90 degrees away from the observer's uh, zenith uh, angular distance of 90 degrees and then you subtract 90 degrees and you get your tzd or true zenith distance of 44 degrees 41.7 so you've got your true altitude of 45 degrees you've got your declination here and you've got your latitude here. So these are the three values you'll be requiring to find out your um, LHA or what we call is P. So using the formula sine true altitude plus or minus sine latitude times sine declination divided by cos lat times cos declination. Now why have uh, we written plus or minus here is it depends on the signs of the latitude and declination. If latitude and declination are same names that is both of them are south south or north north you will use a subtract. If they are of different names such as one is south and the other is north you will add it and in this case you can see both are south latitude and declination right so in the formula you will use the negative sign here then you simply put in the values of the true altitude latitude and declination where it is supposed to be put you can follow my prompts here you can follow the values that i have put up i have only stuck to five decimal places because that's what we normally do the more the number of decimal places the more accuracy it is but if you have to write them down, it's better to stick to about four or five decimal places that gives you reasonable accuracy. Then you get your P as 41 degrees 55.4. Now with longitude by chronometer, there's a rule of thumb that if it's after meridian passage, and uh, then LHA equals P. Whatever you get as P equals your LHA. Now in the in the question itself, it's given that it's PM on the ship. If it's PM, that means it's evening. That means the star is already. Uh, risen from the east reached its median passage and now is setting so you know that it's after median passage then in that case your lha equals to the angle of p that you have obtained using the formula if it was before median passage you would take it as 360 if it's after median passage you will keep the p value as lha then you have your gha from above ghs star and from the equation you know that longitude west gh is the west so you will actually subtract LHA from GHA and you'll get your longitude value. So you know that in the question itself the DR longitude in the west you are in the, somewhere in the west so if it's in the west and GHA would be more. So the rule of thumb is longitude west GHA is the best. GHA is the best that means GHA will be more than LHA. So in this case for GHA to be more than LHA so you'll subtract it and that's the value. However conceptually if you want to understand this you can see that this is the celestial Greenwich meridian. Your GHA value is celestial meridian to the body which is 0 4 5 so let's assume that this angle here this angle this first red arc this one is 0 4 5 degrees 24.9 that's your gha from the greenwich meridian to the star all right and then your lh is 41 degrees 55.4 that is from the observer and i'll change the color this time from the observer to the star is 41 degrees that's your lh or LH then of course your longitude in this case and I will use a different color here becomes the angle from the Greenwich Meridian to the observer that is you this is the longitude and you will see the differences of course between the GHA and LHAs and this value comes out to be 0 0.3 29.5 as well and you are on the west side of Greenwich so this becomes your west longitude all right so both uh, conceptually and uh, mathematically you can calculate the observed longitude then we also have to now we've got our position through which it will pass so we've got the latitude uh, dr latitude and the observed longitude we have to now calculate the position line so for to calculate the position line we first have to calculate the bearing how is that calculated so we have to calculate some components such as a b and c a is calculated here tan lat divided by tan p b is tan dec divided by sin p and then you have to calculate the azimuth using c i'll tell you how all right so a is tan latitude by tan p simply put in the values and then you have to name it how do you name it so it is named opposite to latitude 
unless LHA is between 90 and 270. Your LHA was somewhere in the 41 range, 4155.4. It's not between 90 and 270, so you will name it opposite to latitude. Your latitude was south, so you will name A as north. B, B is tan declination divided by sine of P. Keep it to two decimal places. Normally, you can keep it more if you want, of course, but uh, in this case, we keep it to about two. You can keep it to more. There's no rule like that, all right? So the more the number of decimal places, the more the accuracy it is. So don't follow me in this case. Uh, you can keep as many decimal places as you want, all right? And then uh, you name it south because it's named same as declination. So B is always named same as declination. Your south declination was south, so you named it south. Now you've got your A and B values. So the rule here is to get C. If A and B are same names, you will add them. If they are different names, you will subtract them. So in this case, one is north and the other is south. So you will subtract the two and you will retain the name of the larger. So in this case, the larger is north. So you will name C as north. And subtraction of 0.77 minus 0.29 is 0.48. Then to get azimuth, it's 1 divided by C times cos of latitude. This is latitude. Find out the denominator value first and then divide 1 by it. You get this here, put a tan inverse, you get azimuth as 68.4 degrees. Now, to make things easier, because this is about bearings and position lines, you will make it a round number. So 68.4 can also be written as 68 degrees. So why we've rounded it off? Because it's bearings, you have to plot it on the chart. You can't plot 68.4, so we'll round it off. So if it was more than 0.5, you would round it off to the next number. It would become 69, but this is 68.4. Then I have named it north 68 degrees west. Where did I get my north and west from? North is from C, value of C. So you can see here, C is north, so I have named it north. Where did I get the west from? West comes from LHA. The rule is if it's 0 to 180, the value of LHA, if it's between 0 to 180, it's west. If it's more than 180 to 360, east your LHA was 41 degrees 55.4 or something like that isn't it so it is west that's how I named my bearing as well so my bearing becomes north 68 degrees west that is also equal to 292 degrees how is that because if I draw it here this is north this is west this is 360 this is 270 north of 68 degrees west means you go north 68 degrees this is 68 degrees so this is 270 68 minus 360 is this is 292 that's why your bearing is 292 degrees true to get your position line simply subtract minus 90 and then plus 90 to this values if you subtract 90 from 292 you get 202 if you add 90 you get 382 but it can't be more than 360 so you subtract it of 360 and you get 022 so your position line becomes 022 degrees to 202 degrees that's your position line all right so again if you add 90 to 292 you get 382 you subtract 360 you will get 22 it cannot be more than 360 so i thought i'll write that down as well so just go through this video again it's longitude by chronometer using star my next video will be about longitude by chronometer using planet uh, as a celestial body it's uh, slightly different as well so go through this video if you didn't ask something or didn't understand something please feel free to ask me uh, the reason i go fast through some of these uh, nautical almanac values and all that is because I'm, I've, I've already discussed all this a couple of times in my other videos so i try to focus on the novel aspect of the question not on the same aspects that i've discussed in my previous videos but uh, nevertheless if you have any questions please shoot a message or um, comment on my video and i'm happy to answer it thanks guys